Hello, welcome to another episode of Access for All Supports and Services in Your Community. This show is brought to you by the Center for Excellence in Disabilities at West Virginia University and by the West Virginia Library Television Network. I'm your host, Melina Danko, from the Center for Excellence in Disabilities, also known as the CED. On today's show, we will be discussing Camp Gizmo. With us today, we have Kathy Knighton and Ginger Hoffman, who are coordinators of Camp Gizmo and work for the West Virginia Department of Education. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for coming today. Right, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Kathy, can you mm -hmm. start by telling us what is Camp Gizmo? Well, Camp Gizmo is an assistive technology summer camp. It's held on the campus of the Western New Schools for the Deaf and Blind in Romney, West Virginia. And we bring together parents and professionals and other folks to really talk about assistive technology and learn how to use assistive technology to help young children with multiple and significant uh, developmental disabilities. And we work with children birth through eight years of age. Okay, and then this camp has been around for some time. How long yes. has it been around? Well, Ginger and I were trying to <laughs> figure that yeah. out. We think about 18, about 18 years now. So yeah. it's become quite a tradition. I know it's a big tradition mm -hmm. in West Virginia and it's very well known and everywhere that I go somewhere, someone says, oh yeah, you know, we met them at Camp Gizmo or we learned that at Camp oh, Gizmo. Oh, we've had wonderful success. So it's a huge contribution mm -hmm. to families who have children with disabilities here in West Virginia. And so who sponsors the camp? Well, actually, it's a collaborative effort. The West Virginia Department of Education, Ginger and I work for the department, West Virginia Birth to Three, and then WIVATS. We, you all give us a lot of help with our computer lab. So it's a, it's a collaborative effort of different agencies in West Virginia. And who participates? in the camp? Well, the whole idea of Camp Gizmo is we bring in children, young children as I said, birth through eight with significant disabilities that really need assistive technology in order to help them access mobility or communication or whatever area of deficit they have. We bring in the child <laughs> and their family to work with them and then we bring in professionals, speech pathologists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, special educators, administrators, college students from all over the state to learn about assistive technology. We have workshops, we have labs, we have a kids camp, and then to do evaluations to find out how we can use assistive technology to help these children. One of the most exciting aspects, not only do we help the children coming to Camp Gizmo and their families, but it's an opportunity for professional development. So, for example, at Western University, they closed down their graduate uh, program of speech language pathologists, and Karen Haynes from WVU brings all those students over to help do communication evaluations and really give, we give those uh, students a hands-on opportunity to do evaluations and to work with children that have very significant disabilities. And just to kind of take a step back, for those that are watching the show and they don't know what assistive technology is, can you tell me what, what would that be? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Assistive technology is technology that can be adapted for use by persons with disabilities. For example, it can be a very high-tech uh, equipment like a communication device that has voice output. It can be adapting a spoon so a child can eat. Okay. It can go from very low tech to very high tech. Wheelchairs, standers, there's a whole array of assistive technology and we're just finding more and more uh, ways to use technology and adapt technology in order to help these young children with disabilities. It's really quite exciting. It really is, and for very eye-opening for a lot of the mm -hmm. families, too, I think, because... A magnifying glass could be assistive technology, for example, yeah. for a child that might have a visual impairment. I mean, that's something everybody can use, but for him, it would be adapted to be assistive technology. Well, sure, and a lot of families, I think, have no idea exactly. all of the, the mm -hmm. different What's things available? that are out there. 
And so then I know that you talked about some of the um, students that come, but who are the staff members for the, the camp? Well, we have a wonderful staff. We have the best and the brightest in West Virginia, and many of them have been with us for several years. We have speech language pathologists, we have folks from private practice, we have a physical therapist, Wendy Altizer, who's wonderful. Uh, we have um, teachers, special educators, people from all over the state that work in different fields that come in and share our passion for assistive technology. Have I left anybody out? We have birth to three as well. Birth to three, For the right. younger kids. That, uh, yes, mm -hmm. We offer um, continuing education hours as well and graduate hours, so some of the folks that may come may also have you know, their social mm -hmm. work license or their nursing license, those types of things, so they can also pick up professional de development hours too. And, and we also have, um, from WVU, the feeding and swallowing team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mm -hmm. come over, and I think you all help facilitate that, and it's really exciting. And then we have Ann Cronin, who's an occupational therapist with WVU. So we have, it's really a statewide effort. It's it's very exciting. It really is, and it seems like almost like a one-stop shop for a, you know mm -hmm. almost all your your needs that you would need. You're exactly right. That's a perfect way to describe it because the child can come and be evaluated. I know Ginger's going to talk more about our labs for communication, for mobility. The family's there. Everybody's there so that when they leave the camp, they'll have an action plan and they'll know what to do after that. How long is the camp? I mean, it seems like it could take it's an entire forever. year to get forever. all of this. So, like yes, no. <laughs> yes, it's five it feels days. Like it's five days. Five and again, days. it's on the campus of the Western New Schools for the Deaf and Blind. And what's so wonderful about that, the, their students aren't there. So we're able to use the dorms in order to house our families. The meal, uh, the meals are there. The lodging's there. The campus is absolutely beautiful. There's a swimming pool. So when the kids can participate in camp activities, it's just the perfect location for this type of hands-on community type event. And it has to be so helpful to the families because to be able to get all of those needs met or mm -hmm. even to meet with all of those different practitioners mm -hmm. in just five exactly. days, it, I mean, they would have to take probably oh, a month off of work to, to you know that. to do exactly. all of those appointments and follow-ups and it wouldn't be as coordinated either that's something that's really nice about um, when they come to Camp exactly. Gizmo and the networking with within the fan I think that's what we found mm -hmm. they're just they love being able to talk to other families that have similar issues that have children and these are children with significant disabilities and and this is a life-changing experience for many of these children Sure, and then many of them come back, mm -hmm. right? You mean the children? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we have <laughs> the, families. <laughs> the families come back very mm -hmm. often as professionals. What we do, we only have so many target families or target children, focused children, that we can have a year, usually about oh. 25, 26, yeah. because we're limited by the number of beds we have, the lodging, that type of thing. So generally, Children that have been a, a focus child don't come back because we want to give an opportunity. This is a fantastic sure. experience, and we want other children to have that experience. And then we have a limit, birth through eight, so that's another issue. Okay. So that was my, my misunderstanding. I think it just seems like so everyone knows about it. But well, you know. they come back <laughs> sometimes, not as focused, but as, yeah. uh, volunteers as volunteers or as team leaders and... That type of thing. I think that's perfect um, lead into a question that I had for you, Ginger. Now, we, Kathy mentioned team leaders. You guys break into teams. What what is that, and how does that work? Yeah, part of the structure of the camp, uh, we part of our staff. We have what referred to as team leaders. We have consultants. You know, we have folks that help out throughout that camp. We usually have about 12 teams, and then. Based on the applications that we have, as Kathy mentioned earlier, we have focused families. Each one of those families is assigned a team leader. Usually there's uh, two families per team, lead, per team leader. And then that role of that team leader is to do exactly kind of what you said, help coordinate, network, and facilitate that family through the process of Camp Gizmo. 
you know, what, what types of labs do you need? What kind of professional development are you interested in? What kind, you know, kind of where you at, where, where you're at in terms of uh, your family and the community and adaptations that might be needed. And then uh, the professionals that apply to the camp are also assigned to a team. That could be the speech therapists that Kathy was talking about, our OT students, our occupational therapists, um, some of our uh, teachers that come through, birth to three professionals or service providers, parent centers, those kinds of individuals that are you know, representing other entities will also be assigned a team. So, it, so as people apply, it creates the team breakout as we refer to it because it gives the camp some structure. And then every team, we also have, a, have a, what we refer to as a family notebook, and that helps facilitate the process for that family, what they can expect, how they can sign up for like the, the feeding team and the different labs that are available. And it gives structure to the camp for the individuals coming through because it can be very overwhelming. You know, you're in a new place, new location, you gotta find the building. I mean, these sound so simple, but, it, but the campus is large and it's spread out. And so we really try to have, have that support of the other families in the camp, mm -hmm. of the team leaders, and of the other professionals for those families as well. And then speaking of some of the, the things that you do there, you guys have some activities as well. Can you tell me about the activities that you guys have? Yeah, we have actually kind of a, a variety of activities. We have professional type of activities that folks can participate in for, for professional development, but we also try to offer some family activities because this is a chance for them to come together with you know, kids that have significant disabilities and be a part of a community and have some fun as well and some downtime, but also be learning about their kid and you know, the things that they can do within their own communities of, as well. So you know, with our labs and then um, you know, they have that opportunity, we also offer the kids camp that the kids are at during the day but in the evening, we will offer uh, karaoke night. We will have mm -hmm. movie night. They have the pool there that they can swim. And then also- Ice cream. Ice, ice cream, cream social. social, that's yeah. a biggie. And it's also <laughs> a, our, res you know, mm -hmm. we have a resource there as well. Um, we've, had, we've had some special types of activities where the WVU Mountaineer has come and yes. we've had pictures taken. Uh, we've had you know, different mm -hmm. types of therapy horses and things in the past. That we, we have not so much done that this you know that piece as often, but we have had the other you know we're consistent with the other pieces in terms. We try to offer different things within the camp that will benefit benefit the families and help you know with the professional development. Uh, the nice thing about the campus is that there's also all kinds of playgrounds. So and you know some of them are adaptive because you know it's a school that for kids that have disabilities as well. So some of those adaptations are already on on campus as well. So that gives them a chance to get out and do things too. And in her kids camp, it's inclusive because our staff members bring their non-disabled students, their non-disabled children. So they're able to participate in the camp activities. And then that we have a sip shop too. Yeah, that's right. We do have a sip shop where actually we have um, one thing I, when we're talking about the labs, we offer a sip shop, which is for siblings that, you know, that they're have a, a brother or sister with disability where they have an opportunity to express their feelings and to talk about the situation because sometimes you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of yeah. needs that that are directed to towards you know that child with that disability and that gives them a chance to be able to talk we also have a mom's group and a dad's group and you know what we refer to as the parent rap session which allows you know the parent and it's like Kathy and I, we're not in those groups. It's just, just the, the parents, parents of, and it's led by the parents. parents of the children with the and, disabilities. And it gives a chance just to talk mm -hmm. about specific, you know, feelings and needs and resources. And again, it, it creates that network of support that when they leave camp, they have, you know, possibly that contact as well. Um, and then um, for the kids camp piece, mm -hmm. Kathy's right that I mean the staff individuals their kids come. It's a week-long camp. For those of us who set up, we're gone all week and then when we have to pack. So most folks don't want to leave. You know, it's summer, you know, they have their kids out of school, so, you know, they're allowed to bring their children and we do break the camp down into five kids camp. We have the younger kids, we have, 
you know, the twos and the threes, and then, you know, that six, seven, and then we have a big camp that's like 12 and up. <laughs> but um, so, and within each one of the camps, you know, we have the coordinators and staff that is, that is staffed well. And the nice thing about that, it, it, it does provide a opportunity for the kids to participate in activities, but also for the professionals. They can come into that kid's camp and work with that assistive net technology or observe that child to see how things are yeah. going. And it's just a normal camp, just like any normal kids camp with all kinds of kids, so we can just adapt things for our focus students. Right. And I think that that's really the cool part mm -hmm. of it too, is that it's not all work, it's it's work and play. And so Everybody a, gets to swim every day and play and make little crafts and all that you know well that is actually brought us to the half and so um, we appreciate the information you're providing us with today we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to continue talking about Camp Gizmo so please stick around in 1977 an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father the odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours one in seven million the odds of the Big Easy winning the U.S. Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. supports and services in your community. If you are just joining us, we've been discussing Camp Gizmo. With us we have Ginger Huffman, a coordinator for Camp Gizmo from the West Virginia Department of Education, and Marcy Osborne, a family participant from Camp Gizmo. Hi ladies. Hi. Welcome back. Now, Ginger, for those that are just joining us and they're not familiar with Camp Gizmo, can you give us a quick recap of what Camp Gizmo is? Sure. Camp Gizmo, it's a five-day hands-on uh, type of camp uh, for children birth through age eight that have significant disabilities. It's an assistive technology camp, and um, the camp is held in Romney, West Virginia at the Schools for the Deaf and Blind, and we have um, uh, families come and different staff come and participate as part of the camp during the summer. It's usually held in July, and there is an application process as well for uh, participating in the camp. Um, the assistive technology piece, it could be something uh, as simple as a magnifying glass to a iPad or computer or, or a wheelchair. So it just depends on the needs of the child in terms of what we look at for the assistive technology. And it very, it really is very um, specific to the family's needs. And I know that you guys um, tailor it that way by um, selecting how you select your families and, and knowing ahead of time about the families. So how do you select your focus families that come to camp? Uh, there is an application process and then we have a, have a team meeting. The, those that are the team leaders and the main coordinators in, within the camp to make the selection of families to, so we can match up the team leaders and the family and the needs of the family with the right person to, to help facilitate that camp process. And then uh, within the camp, um, you know, based on that, then you know they can participate in the different labs, such as mo mobility. Uh, we have an adaptation station where they can go in and adapt different things for the child. They're on campus; they make it at the time. They, the family can take it home or uh, you know use it there and wherever. And we also have augmentative communication lab where they evaluate them for speech language. We have a sensory integration lab where um, you know, the occupational therapist works with them, and then we have a CVI lab for, the, for kids that have visual disabilities as well. Yeah, these labs are, are very helpful. I mean, I, I've been there and observed the labs, and it's, you know, it's like you're getting a one-on-one -on -one evaluation, but you're getting as, you know, several of those if, if that's the need for the family during that time, is that right? Yep, yeah, right. They can. Um, they have an opportunity to go through, go to all the labs or whatever specific lab that's, you know, that their child needs. I mean, we also have a computer lab as well, which, which helps us with access and uh, different types of language or uh, development types of things as well. So it just depends on what 
they are interested in learning and needing and we try to match that up for them with what's available at the camp. I'd like to add also, um, as a team leader, that family has been contacted multiple times before they come, so there's a relationship prior to them attending, so they know already where they want to go, what type of situation they have in their living environment, and they work together with that team by going to those labs. So it's a, a very well-oiled machine where, when it comes to choosing the families and working them through. It's not just those five days. It's several conversations prior to going and everybody's on the same page on that first day to hit the ground running and actually meet those needs. And so. I think that's one of the, the key parts that makes this camp so beneficial for people is that really it can be tailored to each family's right. individual needs and it's not the same experience for everyone. It's really whatever their child needs and their family needs. Right. Now Marcy, tell us about your first year at camp. Well, my first year at camp was life-changing. Uh, we were in a very critical phase. Uh, we had recently got a diagnosis for our child. Um, he was only 17 months old, and it was very overwhelming as a first-time mother. And I arrived at camp actually to be a professional and not as a focus family and became an unofficial focus family because of our needs. Um, I was unaware of the abilities that they had at this camp to change a life. Um, when I came, I was scared, I, I didn't know what to do, and I left with the ability to advocate for my child, know what I needed, understand his disability, feel like I had connections, everything all in one week. It gave such a difference in our life at that time, and it was a pivotal change because had I not come, we would you know, we would have struggled. We didn't know where to go for these things. And like we said earlier, it's a one-stop shop. So I came and all of our needs were met right then. And I took that home and from that point on, all of our services were affected by those changes that we made at Camp Gizmo. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very common story that I've heard from other families that have been there. And so um, I know that, that you said how that those changes um, went moved forward from there. How has camp, the camp and attending the camp impacted your life and your family? Well, like I said, we came home and all of our, our services were adjusted um, based on what I had learned um, as a parent and also as an advocate for my child. Um, I also now work in West Virginia Birth to Three, so everything that I do with other families is based on the gizmo method. I try to give my families that type of service because it is something like no other. It is a very significant change for a family when they come. And I know when, you know, everything from how I thought about my child with a disability to also what our future looked like changed after going. And so that in itself can really make a difference when you just get that diagnosis or you don't know where to turn, especially if it's something that's rare and you feel like you're alone. Um, you see that there's a camp full of people. There's so many other children and they all range with their abilities and it is very important for families to see that we do have a future. Absolutely. And I'm sure too to be able um, to come when your child was so young and see some of the families that were there that had older children and see how they were interacting exactly. and having fun with each other and, and it, it gives you that idea too that there are a lot of different opportunities available. The opportunities that I've been given since then, um, I've become a team leader and it has been a wonderful experience. Like I said, I also work in West Virginia Birth to Three and so using some of the skills that I have professionally but then putting it on a personal level, helping these families like you said, you know, being there as with a child that's very young, you can't see down the road. You have no idea what it looks like, but seeing somebody further down that road doing it successfully and thinking, I want to look like that. I want to have the ability to do those things. I want my child to succeed. And it's amazing to watch children come to camp with no ability to communicate and by the end of the, the week ordering their own meal or, wow. you know, pushing themselves in a wheelchair or taking their first steps. I mean, these are all things that happen at this camp and to watch that family come so separated and leave together. It's, it's just an amazing, life-changing experience. It absolutely sounds like it. What do you feel that families need to know about camp? They need to know it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming and it's wonderful because when they come, they have no idea what to expect. 
they don't know how it's going to change them. But nobody leaves unchanged, <laughs> that's for certain. But they, I think they need to know that a diagnosis is just that, it's just words. And what we are looking to give them at Camp Gizmo is the ability to make their own life, the ability to have their child involved in the community, to go to school in the, in the right classroom for them, to give them the ability to, to advocate, to figure out what type of assistive technology that they can use right now or in the future. And it's just it's such an educational component, but a supportive, emotional, just well-rounded event that they will forever remember. And so as overwhelming as it sounds to go and do all these things all day long in a dorm room, in a cafeteria, it is well worth it because what you gain from that is Im immeasurable. And that's what we hear over and over from our families. I have, I've had many families in the past that I'm still contacted with and we all say, you know, it's, that one week will change your life. And, and it's true, I've heard that many times and, and since I've been working at the center. Now, Ginger, um, we have just about three minutes left, so I want to ask you a few wrap-up questions. First, what do you think is the secret to the success of Camp Gizmo? I mean, 18 years of changing families' lives, and you know, it, you hear the same thing over and over again. What do you think is the secret? Well, <laughs> I think one thing, um, one secret is you know, we have a formula. We've been at it for a lot of years, and every year, let me tell you, we look and we look hard, we tweak, we change, we try to improve. But I think the real secret to it is our collaboration, our partners, that we are committed to helping families and children in West Virginia. We want to help them have the knowledge and information to advocate and know what they need and what they can take back to their community to help them um, continue to grow with their child uh, and to build that relationship, you know, between birth to three, the school system, you know, the community, you know, all those things that, you know, we do every day and to be able to, to, to do that and be successful. So I think it's just a combination of having the right people, the right team leaders, and having those folks that are very passionate but very, um, uh, very knowledgeable and skilled. And, you know, the nice thing about the camp is that it does help families and children, but it also helps build the capacity around knowledge about the services and assistive technology and what we can do to help help children you know with our pre-service folks coming in. Sure and there's no other place that you can go in West Virginia and and get that kind of service especially all at once and have that kind of experience um, all in, in five days. Now, how can people find out more information or if they want to sign up for the camp? We have, um, it's, it's on a variety of websites that folks have access to computer. If they do not, they can just call either Kathy or myself or, you know, most of the, if they're in Bertha 3, most, you know, the service coordinators will have that information, but it's on the Bertha 3 website. It's on the West Virginia Training Connections website. It's on the Department of Education website. All the websites are linked that leads back to the application. So, and we also have a Facebook page, Camp Gizmo, so folks can also find out information on, on there as well if they're on social media. All right. Well, that will bring us to a close of the show today. Thanks so much for joining us and sharing such great information. Tune in next time as we look at more programs. This has been Access for All Supports and Services in Your Community. I'm Melina Danko from the Center for Excellence in Disabilities. Take care and we'll see you next time.